This is a production of KMmedia.pro. Welcome back to Positive Talk Radio. Our goal is simple, to explore evolving ideas one conversation at a time. So come on over into our world. I know you'll like it, because on today's show... Oh, it's not very often that I have the opportunity to interview world-renowned people who have been just doing a lot of great stuff for humanity and for the world and today happens to be one of those days welcome to positive talk radio on kixie um eric how are you today sir it's a beautiful day out there it is indeed another fabulous friday yes indeed i've heard that the weekend's not going to be quite as fabulous but that's life well, it looks like it's going to be a little cloudy with a chance of rain, but uh, warming up a little bit to around 54 instead of 50. So, you know, it, it, there's a trade off there. Indeed, indeed. And uh, our guest today, um, they are just remarkable people. One is, has been uh, um, accepted into a Hall of Fame for songwriting. He does lots of songs. He's an author. And uh, Mary Elizabeth Jackson not only is a star in her own right, she's got uh, sisters, Jay, who have been on the show before. That's right. Friends of the show. And we love this, those kids. They're just amazingly talented. And Mary is uh, the mother of those. She has got she works with autism. She's, uh, she, she's just amazing. She was in Washington, D.C. not too long ago talking about it in front of a... Uh, um, Senate or a House commission, one of the two, and and she's just an awesome lady, and I'm looking forward to having the entire hour with her. Um, I'll ask her during the course of the hour if we can play uh, Sisters Jay's latest at the end of the show, but uh, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll, I have to get mom's permission first. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so with that, uh, um, is, is Thornton, do we got him? Fit yeah, situation? Thornton Klein seems to be having connection issues, so he hasn't joined us. But as soon as he does, um, I'll bring him right on for you. I appreciate it, young man. And Mary, how are you today? I am amazing. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I'm doing wonderful. And yes, you can play the girl's song anytime that you want. I, it doesn't matter all the time. <laughs> well, I just, first of all, I, you know, I met you through them. Uh, mm -hmm. Somehow we got connected and, and I did. And Scotland. Oh yeah. And Scotland got us connected yeah. and um, she's a wonderful friend of the show as well. Yes. We and I them. didn't really know because you're not, you were there to promote uh, Sisters J, and you really didn't talk about all the, you were hiding from me, <laughs> all, all the things that you do and how involved you are in the community with TV and radio and podcasting and writing and being an author and also managing the girls. And, and I call you guys the Jackson Five. We are the Jackson Five, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And, and you are, you're phenomenal. And, uh, oh, thank and you. I'm really am glad to have you here because we got lots and lots of stuff to talk about. Hopefully, Thornton, for some reason, wherever he is, he has connection issues. I don't know. I that. know. And he even got a new phone. And so we were excited. We thought it would be totally fine. Um, he's very proud of his new phone. And it could be what I'm thinking. He's in Nashville right now at a writing session in a studio. So he's actually like living the dream or living the, the, the life of that, of writing and writing with songwriters. And um, he's got two really great people he's writing with today. And um, I, it could be the building. I have no idea, but I thought for sure today would be okay. But he does have tech issues when we do interviews, plus his part. So we know part of it is in a studio like that, they're soundproof, yeah. and and a lot of times it doesn't allow stuff to get in or out. So yeah, hopefully so I'm just keeping an eye on my phone in case he says, "Hey, help me." So <laughs> well, hopefully. Um, he will be able to call in and, and we can patch him in or whatever with, with Eric and stuff. But in the meantime, right. I would really like to talk to you. Now you have, you and Thornton are co-writers of children's series books. Tell us a little bit about that. Mm, yes. Very excited. I have uh, two of the books here with me so we can show it. Um, so um, 
the books have been on a long journey, very long. And um, we actually have a new publisher. So we want to give a shout out to Norn's Triad Publications. To uh, We have amazing, amazing women that we are privileged to work with. And um, they took us on. Uh, we have four children's books and um, our publisher a year and a half ago died suddenly and he was a good friend. And so that was really, really hard and um, took a while to get footing back and kind of do that search and debating whether we're going to go self-publishing or try to find a publisher. And so uh, we, I, I knew um, J.M. Northrup from North Triad and um, we began talking and then the discussion started. And so we signed a contract last year before Christmas um, and it's taken a long time to get everything, get all the, you know, everything back from the other publisher, get everything organized. And what we've done actually um, is we've had to rename the books um, and it's called, uh, they are, there are three books in the inspired kids series. So we love that very much because, you know, I'm about empowering and, and inspiring kids. So that's really amazing. But the, um, you know, the first one, I wrote it back in 2013 after my son was born and, um, we had a pretty difficult birth with him and what we were facing. And then I had a very, um, scary after he was born situation. So about five, he was about five months old, I guess. And I was nursing and I was just in this place of complete gratitude that we were both alive and survived. And so I, I say that the book was downloaded because that's really sort of how it happened, you know, and um, I believe in, in divine uh, uh, interventions, divine downloads, divine information flowing through us, you know, mm -hmm. um, because of my experience. So um, I see, that I started, it was really funny because at that time, all this stuff started flowing out of me and I started writing and everything was rhyming. And I was like, what is wrong with me? What is this happening? You know? <laughs> and, uh, but I kept everything in a, in a notebook and I sat on it and I thought I would just give it to my children one day because at that point I was like, I'm just a mom, you know, nobody's going to want to read what I write. <laughs> and, um, uh, about it was 2015 and I kept getting this nudging that's what I say that said, you got to do something with this. And so I was introduced to Thornton. So our friendship began then. And um, he read everything I had written at the time and said, I love this, this story here. And it's the first book. And at the time it was called Perfectly Precious Poolicious. Because when I looked at my son, that's the word I heard. You know, we have nicknames for our kids, right? Yep. And so I was a big fan of Poo, but I love Poolicious. There's Pinkalicious, there's you know, great. There was Purplelicious. There was all those books now out there, but um, I am. Um, I uh, we got into conversation, and he was like, "Can I write ten songs for this book?" And I was like, "Uh, sure." Like we just met, you know, and I was like, "Well, I'm not going to turn that down." <laughs> and so, uh, in a week, he wrote ten precious songs, and so my girls went into his studio and recorded them, and that's sort of how they're career together of singing started because when the book launched, so this all happened in 2015, 2016, we got a contract um, end of 2016 around August or whatever book launched 2017, February 9th. But when we started doing book events, which, you know, authors did all the time back then before the pandemic, the girls would come with me and sing. And so then we sort of, that's how all this kind of started. And, you know, Carson, my son is the cover. He's it's his picture on these covers, but you know, the inspiration for it is him. And it's about accepting yourself, how you came into this world that you are okay. And, um, in all three books, that's really an important thing to get from the story. And, um, there are I am pages in each of these books to get that language started with kids early. The, I am amazing. I am wonderful. I am love. I am joy. I'm one of a kind, you know, because we, we really have to teach them that positive language because we're not, we don't, we're not kind of born with that language, you know? Yep. Yep. And, and you, because of your, your kids, and I know the a little bit of their story, Lily was, um, two years before she could talk. Um, no, was it was longer than that. She was oh. um, three, four, and then it was probably six before it was complete. 
sentences and she could say, you know, she could answer who, what, where, why, how, and when. Um, I think she was a four, four and a half before she ever said, I love you. And Carson was little verbal and then regressed. And then it took a while to get where he was verbal. And so early intervention, um, I'm 100% supportive advocate for because of what it's done for both of my, you know, two of my three kids. It was like magic. Well, and, and I was struck when you were telling me the story, because not only is she an extraordinarily gifted artist, singer, mm -hmm. uh, actor, uh, all, all these things, she's a, a wonderful human being. And, yeah. and you guys, and you have worked very hard with your kids because they're, they they didn't come into this world perfect. Um, no. And, and yet you made every effort to make, give them as many tools as you could give them to live a really happy life. And now, now look at Lily as an example is uh, she's an artist. She's, she did one of your, the covers for one of your books. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, she is uh, talking about creating her own cartoon series, I believe. Yeah. And, it's a webtoon. Yes. She has her own webtoon going. Yeah. And, and Elizabeth is, is a wonderful songwriter, and uh, we're going to play, uh, hopefully later on in the show, we are going to play one of their songs, which it's, it's a video, and it is just incredible. It makes me tear up every time because you're using actors and kids in the video who all have, not all, but most of them have special needs. And There's a lot happy, of them, yeah. And they're happy, and they're, and they're smiling, and it just is an uplifting video, not to mention the, the song behind it that uh, Elizabeth did when she was like 16, which is not She there. did. She, she did. I know, right? I know. She's so amazing um, with her. You know, and, and a little bit to back up about that, um, she was like, I mean, painfully shy as a child. I mean, I remember middle school, high school, she still wouldn't even order her own food at a restaurant. That's just how contracted she was, if you want to call it, and introverted. So growing up, but she could get on stage though, it, which is really interesting. And Thornton is texting me. So let's see what Thornton has to say here real quick. Um, he is saying, okay, he's, he lost signal. He's trying to get back on Wi-Fi. Okay. I'm going to text him the link while we're talking. Okay. okay. Um, but, but, she, what I did with the, the children because of the situation with them was I um, used music, I used art, I used uh, dancing, I used instruments, I used um, uh, exercise, you know, for them to have a channel to be able to process how they were feeling. And in, um, go ahead. In fact, Lily you taught her how to really to speak by mm -hmm. singing the alphabet. Yeah, exactly right. Because she couldn't say the letters, right? She talked like she had what's called cluttering. So she was like, dick, 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 okay, mommy. And that was her language. And at the time, you know, I mean, I had had a daycare. I'd been around kids. I'd helped raise my brothers. So, but I'd never st stumbled upon this before. Um, and so we kind of thought, oh, it's so cute, right? She sounds like a fairy. <laughs> and, and at the time, that's all the clothes that she wanted to wear. You, I can't even begin to tell you what I went through with her as a child, but that's before I knew. I mean, you know, she's on the spectrum and her obsession with fairy clothes, but then her language. So at first it was like, oh, it's kind of cute. But then it was like, no, this is a delay. This is you know, this is all these other things that I didn't know about. So I was introduced to that world at the depth that I was with her when she was about two, two and a half. Um, and thus began therapies, you know, people coming into the home, OT and speech every week, you know, testing and trying these things out and putting her in a public school classroom that was specifically for what was going on with her. So it was like, it was just, it was just a whole new world of things I didn't know. And so Elizabeth had a lot of sensory issues when she was little, but nobody was diagnosing back then. I mean, we're talking 22 years ago, you know, the pediatrician's like, yeah, she's got sensory texture, you know, sensitivity. She'll be fine. And it was like, she's 23 and still, 
you know, she has yeah. tools and ways to handle her sensory stuff. We're a very sensory family. The conversations are open about it. Um, and just this year, Carson's starting to ask me questions about autism and, 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 but he thinks it's a good thing, but that's how I've raised him. I haven't raised him to think that he's different or weird or bad or that it's wrong. It's just that his brain thinks differently, mm -hmm. you know, and I want him to always feel that way. We had to, um, change schools this year. And that was a really difficult thing to go through. He'd been in the same school since kindergarten. School closed in May, the day before school got out. So I spent the summer, not only homeschooling him to catch him up, but to find a new school for him. There is Thornton. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, yeah. Thornton Klein. Hello, Kevin. How are you doing? Um, I can't believe how long it <laughs> <laughs> took to get on here um the Hi. internet here is very not reliable the wi-fi here so anyways well that, that's 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 okay young man because we've had the chance to talk to mary a little bit about about her kids and about the books and and the singing and and the the things that that she went through growing up we've got mary we got lots more to talk about but i did awesome. want to uh um introduce you properly because you deserve a proper introduction not only are you an author but you are a songwriter you have over a thousand songs a hundred over a hundred published songs you've got a number one song if it's not right now it was real relatively recently in in europe um you work with ted perlman who i adore i i he can talk about uh, so many, you know, Bob Dylan and, and Whitney Houston and so many famous people that he's worked with. And you guys are, are all just terrific. So I want to thank you. And by the way, you were um, awarded a, a, uh, all, a uh, Hall of Fame um, award, weren't you not? That's correct. Correct. Uh, very, very good uh, memory uh, in the uh, uh, Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame here for uh, it's actually the TSAI, Tennessee Songwriters Association. Um, and that was in, I think it was two years ago. Yes. And that was, uh, it was quite an honor to be accepted and, and inducted. Now, did, you, did you get to go down the red carpet and then, and then sit there and then them talk nicely about you and then you go up and make a speech? Yeah, I did get to make a speech. Um, and it was, it was held at a, it was held at, um, a theater. Uh, you've probably heard of it. It's a lot of people have heard of it. It's, uh, it's near, um, the, um, Opry, the Grand Ole Opry. It's called uh, the Troubadour Theater. Troubadour oh, yeah. Theater, and they had a um, big celebration, and then um, uh, other people were awarded for things too, for other, um, you know, for their songs and everything. But um, I uh, got to go up and make a brief speech. <laughs> nice. And and uh, Mary was talking to us about when you guys met because she gave you a couple of manuscripts mm -hmm. that you got to read. Tell us about that experience of going through that and finding a partner in essence. Well, she approached me. Uh, she called me up and said that we met at a, a school. Yeah. We um, were connected through a, a headmaster at the school where my girls were. He wanted to introduce us to each other. And then she, uh, and then, then we had, uh, we got together for lunch. It was a Chick-fil-A. I still remember that. And <laughs> it wasn't far away. And then we, um, uh, she brought me in the manuscript and she told me how, how much she'd been writing. And she had this one special uh, manuscript that she had been working on, which is now being released, has already been released again. Mary, do you have the, the copy of the book? I have one I can yeah. show you. If yeah, I do. Them. Yeah, it's right here. There you go. That's the new, actually, that's the second reprint or second print. Uh, but I uh, want to shout out to our publisher. Um, I'm sure you have already, but uh, yeah. on Norn's Triad uh, Publications and um, for believing us. Thank you. And so she showed me the manuscript and I really loved it. It was, it was, it was really great. And, um, and I asked her, I think you may have already told him the story, but um, I asked her if I, if uh, what she thought about me writing 10 songs for the, for the, the book, you know, to go along with it. And she, she was delighted. So I did that in her, um, her girls, um, who are sisters, Jay, as you know, um, they recorded the, uh, the music and everything. So it's, it's available now. The, it has been available and the, and the, um, the tracks and songs are, are available too. So. Yeah. I'm not sure I've ever met anybody who just says, hi, Mary, I'm Thornton. I want to write 10 songs for your, uh, <laughs> for your book. I'm not, I did, that, that takes I quite a little bit of talent. I would think. I mean, it just, it, it's just like, I, I feel like at that time 
and, and Thornton probably can agree to this and you, and you too, Kevin, and anyone else out there. It's like, I kept getting this nudging, but I wasn't listening to it. Right. That instinct or just that messages or whatever we get. And I felt like finally, when I said, okay, fine, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing or who I was going to talk to or anything. All these doors just started opening up. And I feel like sometimes we really get in the flow. If we can get in the flow, then everything just it flows. But we're, we are so stubborn as humans, right? And, and doubtful. We have fears and things that we get in our own way so many times in our life, you know? You know, Mary, that is a perfect thing to say because I firmly believe that if we just be a little bit quiet and then we say yes, <laughs> when the thing, when things come our way, rather than to say, as an example, you could have said, oh no, I'm a mother of three and I'm busy and right. I've got, and we'll just save these for the kids, which you did say at one point. I did and, because I didn't believe in myself. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like, um, I don't think I believed that I was worthy enough to, um, have my words be out there in the world. And I think that happens for a lot of people who want to write and they get stuck there. But we all have a story, and everyone's story is important. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, and and Thornton is a, a, a author. He's a, a songwriter. He also don't you work with the theater group that the Lily is part of, and Carson is, um, is that is that well, both of us. Sense? Yeah, both of us do. I mean, um, the owner is a friend of ours. The way that Thornton and I kind of work with him now is like he does the videos for my girls he does the videos he just did a video for thornton um one of his music artists they just you guys just shot last weekend right right it's a new song that's going to be released we're so excited about it it's going to be released uh with an artist um at the very end of this year and, and it's called l out of lonely l out of lonely l out of lonely and it's um uh, it's a it's a gives some hope and everything but it's um that's the time of year, unfortunately, that people get down and, you know, sad. Some people do and everything like that. And so. Um, the, and, by, and by the way, you two, I have somebody on the phone that you, I think you may know. And she is really is a remarkable individual. Can I bring her on the show? Sure. Yeah, please. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Oh, just awesome. It's great to hear your voice. How are you? I'm doing well. It's really great to hear your voice, too. It's been a minute. It has been, but you guys continue to grow and do some great things. We're going to play your song here in a little bit, but say hello to, I think you know these two, uh, Mary and Thornton. <laughs> yeah. I think hi. so. Hi, hi Mom. Baby. Hi, Thornton. Hey, hey. Oh, it's so I good to hear my baby's voice. Say hello. Thank well, you I for think... saying hi. Thank you. Thank you for that. You are a remarkable individual. And what now you're out of school. What are you doing now for yourself? <laughs> the, the funny story. I'm not out of school. I just started my master's degree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you going to master in? <laughs> um, right now. Um, <laughs> well, I, I hope by the end of it, I'm a master. But <laughs> um, my master's will be in clarinet performance. Um, but I have an assistantship, so I'm doing a lot of uh, administrative uh, administrative things with the bands right now, which is fun. Oh, cool! That's, so, any anybody we might know? Um, oh, in, in TSU. Well, um, yes, it's it's. Uh, I work with multiple bands at uh, MTSU. I work with the marching band and the wind oh, ensemble okay. and the symphonic band and the clarinet studio and all the things. Well, I just want to, before you go, I would really love for you to tell our audience just a real snippet about, first we'll do Thornton, and then I'm going to put you on the spot with your mom. So tell us a little bit about Thornton and how special a man he is. Well, he's such a cool person, and I've really enjoyed not only getting to know him, but becoming friends. Um, because he's so creative and intelligent, and picking his brain is so much fun. Um, I actually uh, interviewed him for a project that I did in undergrad, 
Um, but learning more about his songwriting process and how him and my mother have worked together to write books, it's been really, really remarkable. And he's a wonderful person. And so is my mom. Mm-hmm. And to see them work together, it's it's a really, really cool combination. So. Well, you know, I have to tell you, I, I get to interview a lot of people, and I've never met a, such a well-connected family with uh, mm-hmm. with Thornton and your mom and you and your sister and Ted, and and even and Carson's coming along too. So he's he's the young one, and he's going to be coming along and doing some great things as well. He's an actor and a drummer, and so you guys are all got so much talent. Mary, where did it come from, <laughs> and what is what does Mister Jackson think about all this? <laughs> I don't know, Elizabeth, you want to answer that? What does your dad think? <laughs> well, my dad is more talented than he lets on. Um, he was a drummer in high school. He was a, he drummer, was a, he was a drummer, drummer in high school. school. Yeah, he was a drummer in high school. So he's got, a, he's got the music in him. He's, I, I'd like to say that I get my rhythm from both of my parents. Cool. <laughs> that, that is awesome. Uh-huh. And and I'm sure that I'm sure that Mr. Jackson is just um, pleased and just so proud of you guys. He is. He's he's the corporate. He's the corporate man in in the family. So. Oh, good. So he handles money and all that. All that kind of. Thing. <laughs> he has to make and, it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it because producing records, you know, as you guys know, producing records is expensive. Yes, and there's not there's Amen. not the payback. The payback doesn't come back quickly. Thornton and I were just talking about that today, right, Thornton? Right, it does come back, but it um, well it depends on what part of the territory you. Um, we usually get what do you call PROs, which are ASCAP or BMI. They're called performing rights organizations that collect money for you for TV and radio and film and all those things. And um, the the quarter just came uh, for BMI today and ASCAP was just a little bit um, ago and um, so we get paid every quarter and um, the uh, domestic which is U.S. would be um, probably would get paid every six to nine months after a song has been recorded uh, somewhere in the United States and played performed actually performed Uh, but if it's performed overseas like some of our songs are um, I've hit number one. They can take up to two to two to three years to receive money. Think of, can you think of any other business where it would take that long to get uh, paid? I guess <laughs> two to three years. How do you even remember what you're supposed to get paid? In I know. I'm I thinking. Know. Wait a minute. I got songs oh, no. on there. And oh no! On, Did you, on oh, there, there he so is. I'm going. Okay. Huh? There you are. You dropped off for a sec. You're back. I said yeah. I get a rolly statement, and I'm going. Well, some of the songs are on there, and then some of them aren't on there. They were on the charts and were playing. So, you know. Yeah, you got to call somebody. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Yeah. So, so before Elizabeth, Elizabeth, before you go, I have to ask you: Are you and your sister? Do you have a new song in the works? We do. It's cooking. And when is it going to be cooked? It's, uh, we're putting the final touches on it, so it should be released, uh, hopefully at the beginning of the new year, because with Christmas coming around, everybody wants Christmas music, <laughs> which we're also working on something Christmassy too. Yeah, but, um, um, Kevin, she needs to tell you, I, Alyssa, tell him real quickly where the song came from. Oh, so during the pandemic, I had major writer's block, and so I was actually uh, inspired by, uh, lo and behold, Taylor Swift, (laughs) one of her new albums, because she was writing stories about other people and not just herself. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. So what if I, so I got on TikTok and made a video, and in the video it says, um, write something about yourself in the comments, and I will write a song about you, because I needed inspiration. And so it blew up more than I thought it was going to. There were so many people to pick from. And I found this one person in the comments that said that they loved creeks and rivers and that they came from a troubled home life. um, And that really just kind of struck me. And so 
that's where this song came from. And it's inspired by this person, but it's also coming from a place that I can relate to and then also other people can relate to because that's the point. And um, Thornton will tell you that if you want a song to be a hit, you got to write something that's relatable. Um, and this song, Lily and I have finished it finally because I only had about maybe a minute and a half of a song and Lily and I figured out how to finish it. And definitely this song, I can feel the... 20-year-old Elizabeth inside me being like, that's what I needed back then. And so I love this song. And if it hits me as much as it hits me, I hope it hits other people too in the same kind of way. Because it's important to acknowledge um, where you are, but also growth. And sometimes songs that are not necessarily the happiest of songs can help grow you but also be happy at the end kind of things like that so you're gonna make me cry again aren't you <laughs> well it, 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 it's, it's a slow it's i just when when she played it i and thornton loves the lyrics because we talked about it but when she played it for me the hair on my arm stood up and i was like oh my god like you you have to finish this so i would hound her for a while <laughs> it's like baby you got to finish that song it's so it's just so feely and ethereal and um, they were on the radio four months ago, I think, with Angela Easley in Nashville. And Ted was with them. And Ted's wife was with us. And they started playing it. And she goes, Mary, what is this song? She goes, my hair is standing up. I said, I know. And so <laughs> she was like, she said, Ted, we, this is the next song. This has to be done, you know. So so he gives he gives me a hard time because he says that she, she and I harassed him about it, you know, because he wanted to write. And he still does. He wanted to write a song with Lily and Elizabeth from the bottom up, you know, um, come up with the, the music first and we'll then do. write it. Well, you guys are going to do that. I got to ask you, though, uh, because, you know, I, I get to interview a lot of folks, but but when somebody has that kind of reaction to a song, what are you guys going to do? Now, as an example, one of your videos that is on positivetalkradio.net and YouTube has been downloaded like 23,000 times or 24,000 times. Holy cow. What are you going to do when that song hits and it, and it blows up? Because one of your songs is going to blow up. And then it's, I think it's going to be like the Beatles. People will look at your catalog and they'll go back to the songs that are already produced and they'll go, oh, I like that one too. And I like that one too. What are you guys, what are you going to do? Have a party. Um, thanks. <laughs> Write some more. <laughs> <laughs> we can try. God willing. <laughs> well, you, you're, you, you're so young. Mom is going to do Mom's gonna do a cartwheel, okay? I don't know if I'll get up, but <laughs> we need to put that in the video. That would be fun. Oh, my. Oh, no. that, that, would... that kind of would be funny. I will pay money. <laughs> uh, so these these guys are also they're so just so talented. It's it's great. And if, Thornton, if somebody would like to find out more about you and your work and all the things you've done, how do they do that? We have a website called Thornton Klein. That's an N in the middle. N, like Nancy. T H O R N T O N Klein, C L I N E. And it's dot uh, com. And it's it's um, a new revised website. Has everything on there all music, all the books, and everything. So. By our dear friend, Virginia Limbanda. Yeah, yeah. She designed it. It was really great. It looks yeah. great. And so, um, yeah, that's how you find me. Um, I'm also on Facebook. You know, it's Thornton Douglas Klein. Uh, if you want to find me and give me a shout, I mean anybody listening out there, all the way to uh, was it British British Columbia, right? And yeah, this is this is Kixie, so it's a fifty thousand watt station in Seattle, so it goes from Seattle close to the Canadian border and down to Chehalis or so, and so uh, we've got lots of potential for lots of people to listening. And we just do you know who John Tesh is? Uh huh, sure do. I love his music. Yeah. Yeah, well, he was, uh, he's on the on the station right before us. Oh, so wow. we've got nice. some local John Tesh people that I'm sure stayed for Positive Talk Radio because we're gaining some traction here as well. Well, nice. congratulations. That's awesome. You know, um, I, um, 
I just want to say that, and also, don't you have um, online listeners too? Of course, right? I mean, as far as Wade probably is in Europe or in other places that listen to us, they're probably right. We've been downloaded uh, in over a hundred countries, and all fifty states. Uh, <laughs> I don't wow. know what's going on, but somebody in Hong Kong apparently likes us a lot. So, <laughs> well, that's a day. That's a day. Isn't that a whole day difference? And something like that. I, you got me. I have no Go idea. That's awesome. So we are we are positive talk is growing, and for with people like you, Mary and Thornton, I I got to tell you, you are you are special, and Elizabeth. You guys are all special to me. You really are. Mm -hmm. And we Elizabeth, love you. You're part of the family. Yeah, you're just amazing, and we we do appreciate your. Uh, your belief in us and everything and, and you having us on as on your show and everything well i was going to tell elizabeth uh tell lily and you guys when you get that song done you have to come back on the show and premiere it here that would the, be wonderful yeah it'd be great it'd be awesome and by the way elizabeth thank you for your nice uh, kind words too thank you Sorry. oh you're welcome i'm just sitting back <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hashtag. hashtag hashtag right now that's just a southern girl coming out in her. I'm just spitting facts. I'm just spitting facts. <laughs> well, it's so yeah. I love it. Because they are they are in Tennessee. So that's right. You have to say y'all. Yeah, and yes. I'm actually right now in downtown Nashville too. I'm right I'm in Nashville right now. So. I know. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I'm downtown Nashville. I'm not. He's I in the studio to, right now writing. Right, I'm in the studio uh, downtown. Actually, we just, Kevin, we just finished writing a Christmas song. Isn't that funny? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, tis the season, you know. I know. <laughs> so, well, um, you need so, to write a song called Jingle My Bell. There you go, right? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put a cap on that one and say, how about probably not? <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is hard to come up guess, with. But... It is hard to come up, Kevin, with uh, very original um, Christmas tunes because you know there's people that say they they write or, original songs and they've all been done, you know. And so, I mean, I'm talking about something totally new to this planet, you know, really, really fresh and new that somebody hasn't said. It's it's tough, you know, very tough because there every... are only so many chords. Well, no, and that, but there's just so many, there's so many of the same yeah. ideas and things that are coming out, and there's nothing like real fresh, you know, new and stuff, really, or saying something yeah. different than anybody else has said, you know. So, now I got to ask all all of you this question because I was on the phone with when Ted was in the room, and I think Thornton was there, and Mary was there, and the girls were there. What's it like when like the five of you get together in a creative session and are all coming up with these really cool ideas? It's well, we just we just this happened right now today. I we have three writers total, we're um, great writers too, very and a recording artist, and we were um, just tossing around ideas and things. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot. It really is a lot of fun. It, it, there's a lot of um, kinetic energy. You know, it's uh -huh. it's sort of like uh, bouncing off, and it, it's a really fun experience to watch the girls and Ted, and then they go at it with each other. You know, at each other, but it's in a good way. It's not a bad way, but he harasses them they harass him and um but it's it's all fun and banter and then lily will pipe in and she'll like you know she'll go for the juggler with ted and then he's like you know i think he's afraid of her i don't know what do you think elizabeth um it's really funny because she just gives him the death glare and then he's like okay i can't fight with both of y'all <laughs> uh -huh, it's funny. also we go through times where we're in the creative process, but we don't get anything done because we laugh so much. Oh. Or we just all have so many ideas that we're just bouncing off one another. And we have ideas, but then we start talking about other things and blah, 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 blah. But it's always so fun. <laughs> oh, that is, I, you guys, would I would please take a camera in there, stick the camera up in the corner and just have it record one of those moments. Because cause I yeah. think it would be a well, lot of you'll fun. Have, you'll have so much content. I, I, yeah. I, I, and I will because I am putting together Kevin as a Kickstarter because we need to raise funds to finish the album out. So that is a video that will be in the Kickstarter. So mm -hmm. cool, cool. Well, yeah. you might have an actual television show that come up with a television show about uh, behind the scenes. You know what's uh, behind the scenes of how a song hit song was written. You know, like actually watch hits. Uh, 
hit writers write together and with artists and um and that that can be like pretty amusing and pretty entertaining actually to see how it goes through the the thought process and all yeah that would be that i think would be very interesting for most of us who have no earthly idea how to do it and to watch yeah, like people how does the song get started most people just think you just yeah. i guess just whip up a song and it's all you know you know it's inspiration for things like I know we say, I mean, my language and Thornton's language and even Elizabeth now is like, that's a book title. That's it. For me, it was a book title forever. Right now. It's like, that's a song. That's a total song. Mm -hmm. and, and Thornton and I can be in a conversation on the phone. It's like, oh my gosh, we need to write a song about that. You know, like a song that has been waiting. It, it's, I, we started one <clears throat> about a song being wait, waiting to be sung. Like all these songs mm -hmm. that are sitting on a shelf that, that may never, ever be heard in this life. You know, I know. So, I started to make a list like that, so I don't forget the little phrases. Right, I know. Yeah, and, and um, th go ahead. That's where we have a, a kind of a hook book or hook list. Um, I'm always thinking titles. Mary knows that, and Elizabeth does too. Uh, they do both know that, but um, like in a writing session, we can be writing a song, and all of a sudden, a whole bunch of new titles and ideas just start flying. That's when creativity creativity flies, and you know, just. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, Thornton, I have to tell you, Thornton, um, so Thornton and I were working with Chris Golden and we were writing with him. So we wrote this song with him. I so hope the Goldens, published. you've heard the Goldens of the Oak Ridge Boys, basically the same thing. Yeah, William Lee Golden's son and uh, from the Oak Ridge Boys. And it's called uh, The Devil's Working Overtime. So it's 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 old Southern country like, you know, and um, Carson was singing the song the other day. <laughs> he remembered it? From <laughs> yes. Oh, he's in the back seat. Everything. He's in the back seat. The devil's working overtime. He was singing the song, and I. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess we did write a pretty. I guess a pretty good song. I know. <laughs> we have to tell Chris that. Chris, you got to get this. I know, Chris, you got to get this thing recorded, man, because uh, you know it's ready. It's time to be out there. But I just thought that was hilarious. Hey Thornton, there's a there was a guy that I I for a while I did a late night local music musician show. Right. Uh, on KKNW. And one of the guys, he was 15 years old at the time, and he's been down in Nashville doing some stuff. He's a singer songwriter. His name is Dylan Warnock. Are you familiar with that name? At I all? heard that name. Yes, I have. Yeah. Oh, good. So he's he's down there, and he's he was been, been doing that kind of thing as well. So I guess um, I'll look him look him up. I huh? say should I say uh, you know you you said say say hey, Dylan right or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, he still has a video somewhere out there that you know, from my show uh, way back when. It was called Kevin McDonald Presents, oddly enough, right? Um, and, and stuff. So, um, but I, you know, and that's the, I love you guys because I can't do anything or what you guys can do, but you just inspire the heck out of me. For yeah, for but you have everybody. I tell people that all the time. There's people that tell me that they say I have no talent. I don't or I can't do what you're doing. And I say, you know, I believe everybody has some kind of a talent. They just um, don't always, um, sometimes no, they don't recognize it right away. Uh, it takes time to develop it or find it. But um, I think everybody's talent. You yourself have a talent. You're very, you're very um, gifted at, uh, you know, the, the show and everything and hosting and, mm -hmm. and talking. So, I mean. Absolutely, well, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that because I, if my talent is to bring people like you mm -hmm. to people who would like to listen to what you have to say. Right, your talent. One of your talents is being able to recognize um, what other people have, and, and gifts and talents and things like that, and then and then um, share them with your audiences, right? And Oh, exactly, exactly, and and it, that works for me, and and then I get the chance to meet, like as an example, when uh, Elizabeth and Lily are walking down the red carpet to receive their Emmy, and. Uh, if that will be, you know, I can say, "Hey, I knew them when." Well, yeah, and that would be that would be the time when we call up Kevin and say, "Hey, Kevin, um, you, we've got a scoop, and and we give, we're giving it to you." <laughs> you yeah. Oh, bless yeah. your and have, soul! And, and we won the lottery, so we're going to send you a ticket to come hang with us, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, I'm I'm I love what I do. I love talking to you guys. And and by the way, before we get too far down the road, 
Um, we've got about 14 minutes left. We've, by the way, we, Eric, I've killed the commercials again, so don't worry, <laughs> don't worry about it. But if you're a syndicator, I do run commercials during my show anyway. But, but this, <laughs> yeah, this you gotta let them know that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but, we'd love to hear from your audiences too. Anybody wants to, you know, don't be shy. Just uh, drop us a line or something, because um, I'd love to hear some of the, from some of the people. You know. Yeah. So if if, if and Eric will. Uh, if Eric is there, I'm. I don't have the number right in front of me, but uh, Eric, if somebody wants to give us a call, how do they do that? He may not be right there. Hey, I have the okay. number. Do you, Do you want me to give you the number? Oh, would you please? I have the number. Yes, Elizabeth, are you still there? Did we lose you? Maybe oh, we lost Alyssa. Oh, you're still there. Okay. Uh, it's uh eight six six eight eight zero. Five four nine four. You sound like a podcaster. <laughs> yeah. And I can and confirm that's correct. That. What? <laughs> thank you, thank you, Eric. I'm sorry. I, I, I. Yeah, you're you're a busy man doing what you're doing. So, uh, but thank you. And uh, um, so, if you'd like to give us a call, you can do that. But I want to make sure that we talk about. Um, Mary and your work with Autism Tennessee and your work mm. with because of um, your family and your family situation, you've taken it upon yourself not to just let it be. Hey, there's a song title. Um, oh, yeah. and, and to really do something with your with your life. And and one of those is working with autism. Uh, explain mm. what you're doing with that. Yeah. And Lily texted me and said she can call in, but I don't know if she ever did. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so my, we talked earlier in the show before Thornton was able to get on um, about my journey with autism with my children. And um, I, I guess it got, there was just so much to it that there was no way that it wasn't going to be a big part of my life, you know, um, because of the needs that my children had. And then uh, Lily went through a significant trauma at five, which changed my direction as an advocate. Um, and I decided to get certified. Um, I didn't really get finished with all that till after Carson was born, but I wanted to know what my rights were, what my children's rights were, my family's rights were for protection. And just to know that knowledge, because the situation that happened with Lily took me down a path of trying to change law in the state we, we live in back then. And still, even today, there's I'm coming at it from a different point of view because, or a different avenue. And some of that is with Autism Tennessee uh, because um, changing law in a state is quite challenging. It's very difficult. Um, and I wanted to right the wrong that happened to her and make sure it never happened to any other children ever. It just should never happen. Um, but through the certification, I'm able to help families, you know, with services and schools and understand those things and what their rights are and stuff. But it also has allowed me to go from a very disempowering place with what happened to a very empowered place. Um, I feel like knowledge is really a key to empowerment in our lives. And as a parent with a child with needs, it doesn't matter what your child's needs are whatever challenge they have, the more you're educated about what they have, the more you can help your child be the most successful that they can be because you are their advocate. Sometimes you're their voice, especially if you have a child who's non-communicative or non-verbal, you know, you, you have to, you have to become so much more in your life than you thought you would be. And so I, I get to be an ambassador advocate with autism Tennessee. I get to go out in the, in the public and the community and, and to educate and help. And it's, it's been, it's been really amazing the journey that it has taken me on. Um, and I've tried to bring the books and the music and kind of all that together, you know, so, uh, cause they're all passions of mine and, um, you know, our libraries need to be more sensory friendly and, you know, I've helped create a sensory room here in our library locally. And then we did, there's one now in the national public library too. And, because uh, children and families need to feel comfortable. And the library is a very important place to go because literacy is everything, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And by the way, and this is for Elizabeth and for Thornton, I suggest that Mary 
is when you get her going on something, she's a mama bear and isn't going to stop. Elizabeth, mm-hmm. what do you think? Um, you nailed it right on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she's she's a tough mama bear oh she's the strongest woman i know Mm. and i hope to be just like her when i grow up Mm. i mean now you made me cry (laughs) (laughs) it's it's all the words that she's um i've always said that she's the wind beneath my wings Mm. well you're mine Um, so right back at you i love you you're gonna make me cry I know it. Would you? Would do, I love that song, Elizabeth. Would you and Lily do a cover of that? I think you guys would do a phenomenal job if you did a cover of that. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea. The writer lives might in think, the writer lives in Nashville. He wrote this song. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so you probably get a hold of him. Oh, let's do it. That would just be amazing, and I would ball my eyes out through the whole thing. <laughs> That was, I mean, I mean, Pat Midler did a wonderful job with it, but I think the two of you could do every bit as good as that. Mm, that would be gorgeous. So, wow. so, so put that, write that down now. Write that down. And so, write that down, write that down. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, we're going to run out of time here, but, but Thornton, I'd like you to, again, say to our audience, we're, th- this is the part of the program where I get to shout up. It's your turn. So you tell our audience anything that you would like them to know about you, about life, about whatever, whatever you'd like them to know. Well, I, I enjoy, I love writing and it's really, truly a passion. Um, and I, um, it, it, whether I ever made any money, I haven't made money out of it, but if I ever made any money out of it, um, I would still, if I hadn't made any money out of it, I would still be doing it because I love it. It's, it's actually a true passion, but of course you still have to pay your bills and things, but, um, other thing is, I always want to keep passing it forward or paying it forward to the uh, to the next generation because I think that's real important to keep keep them going. You know, like you got the, the sisters Jay and other people they work with. I like to try to write with a lot of people also that are uh, the younger generation next coming up because I, I know that they're gonna what keep that flame going all the way through. You know, the other generations and and then pass it to other people. So that's one of the things that I would like to say to people that are doing that. You know, with their passion, a dream to, to never give up. I know it's easy to quit. There's people that 150 people come to Nashville every day, but a lot of people do leave. They quit. And Nashville can be like a seven to 10 year town, meaning they can take that long to make it. So you got to hold on. It's not a part of quitting, but it, believing in yourself. Like Mary had said, she didn't believe in herself at first, but now she does. So that's, that's sort of my philosophy there. And, and I, I really appreciate it. I'm very grateful to people like yourself Kevin, you know, for hosting us and believing in us and everything. So having you on our show. On your well, show. you guys, you guys are extraordinarily talented and, and seven to 10 years, that's, that's what it takes. Yeah. And if you're not, you know, I, I had a friend say to me, well, I want to do a podcast and what, what if I'm not successful right away? And I said, the only, the only way you're not going to be successful is if you quit. Yes, Just it's true. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, you don't know about like, you don't know if that next big hit or that next thing might be yours and and you suddenly just quit like like um a couple of days before it happened or it would happen or a year before it happened you seem saying it could yep. happen you just don't know and and as long as you're putting out good content and doing what your heart tells you to do you're going to be a winner regardless whether you get rich from it or not it becomes immaterial um exactly. mary your turn Mm, I was saying Elizabeth always said that she she can second me on this, but she says she just wants to be very successful in life. But it doesn't matter if she's famous or not. She just wants to be very successful and happy at what she's doing. And um, I think that's great. Um, I would say don't give up on yourself. And I would say really age doesn't matter because, I mean, this career for me where I'm at didn't start till I was 48, almost 50 years old. So I never knew that was going to happen. Um, and at that age, you might think you're kind of done almost, right? You're at the halfway mark. We hope to live to hundred, but that doesn't happen for everyone. But you know what I'm saying? You don't, you think, oh, I'm, <laughs> I've lost every, all the time I could do things. No, you never know when it's going to happen. And you can't, if you don't do it, it never gets done. So you just have to, you just have to have faith and take that leap. And, um, I would say for, uh, parents out there who are, 
um, struggling and looking for help with their child, you know, reach out to uh, the doctor and look for services and support and other groups of children who might be going through the same thing that you are because support is very, very important. Um, and um, I hope we just keep getting to do what we're doing right now because um, we want to keep having fun and it's fun. And um, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be able to be creative in this world. You know, um, so it is a gift. And thank you, Kevin, for being with us through the journey of the music. That's been, you know, a very important part of it is our friendship with you. And um, we want to send some authors your way. Um, you know, yes, I do. Um, and we want to, you know, we want to tell everybody to, uh, you know, they can find our books. The um, Inspired Kids series is on um Amazon and, and other places where books are sold. And you can look up my name on Amazon, Mary Elizabeth Jackson or Thornton Klein. The books will show up there. You can go to Norn's Triad Publications. The books are there. All the eBooks are there. And we want to give a shout out. You know, I already did to our publisher, but all the authors that are in our group that we, um, we have a really positive group. It's a small group, but we're very, it, it's really a wonderful group of uh, supportive uh, we're all real supportive of each other. So it's wonderful. But um, my website is yeah. www.maryejackson.com and girls are at sistersj, you know, sistersj.com is their website. So And that's, there. sadly, that's got to be the last word. Elizabeth, I'm sorry. Okay. Next, We'll get you next time because we've run out of time, sadly. Okay. And by the way, be kind to one another because each other's all we've got. We'll see you Monday at 3 p.m. on KNW.